YouTube, what's going on? It's your boy Carl coming back at you from Golden Grimmett Productions. This time around, we are going to be reacting to Larry Bird welcoming rookies to the NBA. If you are new, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. I greatly appreciate it. It helps me out tremendously. So let's get straight into this video. man. Around the NBA, everyone has their first moment in the league they still remember. Everyone starts out as a rookie and when you're a first-year player, whether it's a trash talk exchange, getting owned by a more experienced player, or scoring your first point in the league, those memories stay with you forever. NBA rookies are also not above being starstruck by sharing the court with players they grew up watching. Considering that, things might get even worse when that vet player who's welcoming you is the trash-talking goat himself, Larry Bird. Welcome to the Squad Dawkins channel, here we break down the best welcome to the NBA Larry Bird stories. With the number of players he trash-talked and took to school, if the NBA ever introduces a trash-talking award it should be named after Larry Bird. The guy was just peerless when it comes to mind games, as rookie Eddie Johnson found the hard way. Eddie Johnson guessed it on the Rex Chapman show published on BasketballNews.com YouTube page. He shared the legendary trash-talking and beating he received from the legendary Celtic legend. He was always talking so much trash to me, and he taught me how to trash talk. I mean, Larry Bird basically taught me how to trash talk. <laughs> And Fantastic. and so there's one particular one game in Boston, he just worked me over, man. Like I went out for the jump ball, and it was my second game of my career, and Cotton Fitzsimmons started. And I'm scared to death already. You know, not just a bird, but you right. know, I played against Mikhail in college, so he was cool. But Robert Parrish, I mean, Dennis Johnson, I'm looking at all these dudes, man, and I'm, you know, I'm intimidated. I had played against Danny Ainge in college. Mm -hmm. So, but Bird walks out at the jump, and the veterans on my team said, Eddie, just don't pay attention to him. Fine. <laughs> so I mind my own business on the jump. They gave that man a warning, bro, before he stepped on the court. Please don't pay him no attention, bro, which it was impossible to probably do. And he walks out. And he just stands next to me and he leans over and he looks at me. And I didn't pay him any attention. He said, do you honestly think you're going to guard me? Like, Curse that. I'm like, what? I just didn't say no. <laughs> then he stands up and he looks over at our bench and he looks at Kai. You all think this rookie going to guard me? Man, I'm going to bust you up just right in my ear. And I'm just looking forward. I'm like, and so by that time, all the guys on the floor is just cracking up, even my teammates. So I'm like, would this official please throw this ball up? <laughs> so they, the official couldn't throw the ball up because there was something going on on the side. So then finally he walks around, stands in front of me, he said, I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm going to wear your ass out. And then I looked at him. I said, I'm here. Don't worry about it. I said, you ain't intimidating nobody. I said, I'm from Chicago. Where you from? He started laughing. Game starts, and he's just wearing me out. Okay? And I'm trying to go back at him. I'm shooting bricks. And in the fourth quarter he was in, it was late. Game was kind of close. And he came down. He said, you talking all that junk. I bet you can't do this. And he raises up from Steph Curry range. And he shoots an air ball. And I look at him, he like, that don't matter. It's the fact that I can do it and stay in the game. I bet you can't. Oh my God. Even in that air ball, bro. Oh my God. Oh my goodness. Torching him, even in the air ball, dog. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay. So <laughs> that stuck with me. Johnson's story is not the first nor the last we will hear connected to Larry Bird welcoming rookies to the NBA. During his rookie season in 1982-83, Dominique Wilkins walked over to four-year pro Larry Bird right before tip-off. Bird, of course, was having none of it. 
And that was the first time Bird ever talked trash to me. It was my rookie season, my first game I ever played against him. What he said? <laughs> I can't even tell you what he said. <laughs> but my first year, I'm, I'm excited. I'm playing against Larry Bird. I go shake his hand, wouldn't shake my hand. Back then, guys just- You wouldn't shake your hand? Wouldn't shake my hand. He would look at me and just nod, right? And I thought, well, maybe he's just getting into the game. It didn't end just without acknowledging the rookie Wilkins. Bird continued hitting him with the trash talk. And so the first time I'm gone, he said, you don't even belong in this league. He shoots a three. Wham. I said, okay. Next time he comes down, he said, I don't know why they got you guarding me. He hits another three. Now, I'm really, uh, I'm really mad now. Right. He's coming down the court, and I'm guarding him. He looks at me, he said, I don't know why they have you guarding me, Holmes. <laughs> and he shoots the three. Now, I wasn't upset he made the three. I said, but this son of a gun just called me Holmes. <laughs> 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 And so I never forget that one thing, though, man. I'm like, I was so hot. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Another former All-Star that got a nice welcome by Bird was the Seattle Supersonic Sean Kemp. Kemp found out the hard way just how ruthless of a trash talker Bird was when he faced him as a rookie in 1989. I'm going to keep this real with y'all, man. My ass got busted real early, man. I came into the league, man. I was in the <laughs> team. Um, you know, you know how some of them vets, man, they play you to the team, man. I got played down in Boston one night. We was playing uh, Boston Celtics, so the great Larry Bird. I didn't really know much about it. You know, I'm from Indiana, Larry's from Indiana. I knew about the history of Larry, but I didn't realize how he really got down. And Larry gave me, he gave me, uh, he gave me 50 and three quarters. And he, was, he was hitting everything? Man, and he talked to me the whole entire game. He what did he say? He do. Well, first of all, he asked me to jump the ball. He said, you the cat that broke all my records in high school, right? And I was like, yeah, that's me. He goes, yeah, you the one that used to dunk on my brother too, right? Now, Eddie. And I was like, yeah, that's me. He said, I got you for you tonight. So every shot he was calling, at the defensive end, he would tell me, he'd be like, when I get down to the other end, I'm going to pump face you, get a hand one on you, look at you, go off the glass. That's how cold Larry yeah. Bird was. And I was to the point of like, look, I'm going to foul him so hard that he's going to, He's basically gonna take his will. He started shooting the ball with his left hand, man. I was trying to find foul his right arm. He was shooting with his left hand, banking it off on me, looking at me, still slapping me on my butt and everything, man, tell me everything. <laughs> when another legend was starting his NBA career, he saw firsthand how great Larry was and how serious he was about fulfilling his promises. John Stockton saw Larry Legend doing his thing at a young age, which- Yo, he did John Stockton dirty too. I hadn't, bro, this is the first time I'm hearing that he, like, he was talking crazy to John Stockton. It's something he'll never forget. Back in 2018, during an appearance on The Dan Patrick Show, the Utah Jazz legend talked about his favorite Larry Bird story of all time, and he didn't hesitate, choosing one that he lived during his first campaign in the association. He, I remember as a rookie, uh, he came in, <laughs> he walked by our bench at the you know, I've never heard John Stockton talk. This is my first time ever hearing this man say a word. It's crazy. Maybe I just didn't highlight him enough or, but man, I've never heard him talk before. Salt Palace and said, I feel like 43 tonight. <laughs> and he came out, he scored 43 in the third quarter and checked, checked himself out with a 20 point victory. And uh, I was fairly impressed with that yeah. one. So he just picks a random number. I feel like mm, 43. And he says it yeah, to the to, yeah. to the bench. Yeah, yeah. It was fairly impressive, you know, especially yeah. when he lived it, when he backed it up. In 2018, the former Orlando Magic sharpshooter Dennis Scott told another bird welcome to the NBA story. Scott, who was selected by the Magic with the fourth pick of the 1990 NBA draft, detailed how Bird shut him up with his legendary trash talk and basketball skills. Bird was the only one that really kind of. In, in his soft-spoken way, when you talk, when you talk about guys talking trash. Yeah. Hey, Rook, good to see you. Hey, big Kyle's career. I'm gonna catch the ball. I'm gonna pump face. You're gonna reach for it. You're gonna get fouled. Two tweets. You're gonna have a seat. Lord, behold, Dan. He catches the ball. He pump face. I go for it. I reach first foul. I come down court. Scott Skyle kicks me the ball. The mental aspect of Larry's game is crazy because, like I said, it's almost like he would tell you. And then you would subconsciously play into whatever he was telling you that was going to happen. That's how much control he had. I shoot a three in your face, Larry Legend. Yes, yes, I'm feeling good, Dan. <laughs> he catches the ball again, catches it. My dumb self reaches for it again. 
Tweet, tweet. Go have a seat. I see you second quarter, Rook. <laughs> so that, that's how Larry Bird huh. pushes me into the NBA. Clyde Drexler is possibly the most underappreciated Hall of Famer in NBA history. The high-flying Drexler was the Blazers' 14th selection in the 1983 NBA draft. He, too, quickly learned on the greatness of Bird and his trash talking. I was guarding in my rookie year. He looked at me and he goes, you can't stop me. And I looked at him and I said, gosh, boy, you're, you're so confident. Bird could not believe the golf from a rookie Drexler. He issued a stern retort before resuming his destruction of the young Blazers' swingman. He was confident. You're a rookie. You don't know anything. He proceeded to score like 10 straight points off The coach took me out the game. He walks by and he's laughing at me. Essentially, Drexler rivaled Bird as one of the league's elite wings and took Larry Legend's spot as one of the very best when the Celtics star retired in 1992. Still, despite his eventual place among the game's top stars, Clyde learned almost immediately never to speak back to Bird. In 1992, the best players from various colleges were called in to face the dream team for their first scrimmage. Future All-Stars Chris Webber, Penny Hardaway, Allen Houston, Grant Hill and Jamal Mashburn were part of the team dubbed the College All-Stars. Webber, who won the Rookie of the Year award in 1994, was given a stern warning by Larry Legend before the game. By Webber, Bird told him to make sure he's getting his sleep, because tomorrow Bird is gonna bust his ass, and that he is going to remember it the rest of the week. Another angle to the Bird in the 1992 College All-Stars was brought by Jamal Mashburn. According to Mashburn, he, along with Weber, Houston, and Rodney Rogers, was given first-hand experience of Larry Bird's trash talking the very first time they met Larry Legend. And Larry Bird, you don't realize how big Larry Bird is until you stand yeah, up for most of yeah, Larry Bird. Exactly. As a gift. He walked by us, he says, y'all those college guys? And we was like, yeah, 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 we the college guys. And he looked at us and he said, get some fucking rest, it's gonna be a long week, and walked off. And we was like, what the hell? <laughs> and so that we just excited, we like, oh, he just talking shit or whatever. <laughs> but that's kind of cool, though, that's Larry right. Bird. You know, <laughs> you know, you know who I know he finna turn him up, boy. And I know he finna do them dirty. Oh my goodness. Yeah, but he ain't call us by Chris Webber and Jamal Matthews. He's like, y'all them college kids. And then something happened. We're sitting there and we get back to the hotel. Rodney Rogers says something to, it's a group of them. It's Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, and everybody's shooting the shit. And Rodney Rogers said, hey, Larry, you ain't hit a jumper since 84. Magic heard that shit. And we ain't think nothing of it. The next day we came in and I'd never seen this. And this one I was like, this is a different breed. Magic Johnson fed Larry Bird the ball probably about eight times in a row down court. Larry Bird got the ball on Rodney Rogers and every time he was about to make a move, he told him what he was going to do. <laughs> one dribble, pull up, going left off glass <laughs> one dribble going right spin shot bucket he scored nine times or eight times in a row left the court to go lay down because he couldn't sit on a bench right, he had to lay down that, 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 that. and said young fella look like 84 huh <laughs> Last time he made. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> so I'm sitting there and I'm like, wow. I said, so that's 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 they kicked our ass for the rest of the week. Weber finally added another awesome bird story from that scrimmage. C. Webb shared the small trash talk that Larry Legend threw at Rodney Rogers and the young prospects as he was lighting them up with his sharp shooting skills. We wanted to see Bird and to be able to practice with him, see how he worked out, see how he shot, see the junk that he talked constantly. <laughs> Why do you think my generation grew up talking so much? Guys? They, 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 taught us, they taught us how to do it. We used to watch all those uh, blooper tapes and everything else. The, the best, the best was um, uh, my man Rodney Rogers. Strong, fast, quick, athletic, and Bird just set him up in a the corner. They, someone drives to the corner, stock and pass out the Bird, and here you see Rodney Rogers take a full sprint. And I'm talking about, you know how uh, how Zion blocked that shot a couple weeks ago? Yeah. That's where, like, like where Rodney Rogers came from. Except, unlike the young kid that <laughs> shot the shot, 
in the middle of uh, him being in the midair, uh, Bird says, welcome to the parachute club, rookie. And watches him go by him, shoots the ball, and like Curry does what Bird did because he shot it and just kept walking down, like shaking his head like these dumb youngsters. They don't never get it. For Bird, it didn't matter if you were a future legend like Dominique Wilkins or John Stockton or someone who also repped his home state of Indiana or just a white guy you got treated by Larry. Equal opportunity trash talking, bro. He was going to give any and everybody that work. It didn't matter if he was a legend. It didn't matter if he was a rookie college kid. That's respect because he didn't just pick on. He didn't just pick on the best. He picked on everybody. Very legend, even if it's your first experience in the NBA. Tell us in the comments who is the best trash talking player in the NBA right now. If you enjoyed. Oh, no. I don't know who the best trash talking player in the NBA is right now. They all garbage as far as trash talking, but I don't know. Let me know in the comment section below. Outside of Larry Bird, who was the greatest trash talker of all time? I know they have players like Reggie Miller and that stuff like that, but let me know in the comment section below. But I've enjoyed this video. It's been your boy Carl from Golden Grimmer Productions. Till the next one, peace.